Hello everyone, this is Mr. Nightmare here, and we're going to continue reading Battle for Max's Heart, Chapter 7. Before we get started, I would like you guys to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe to this channel if you guys want more creepy pasta fan fictions out there. Until then, let's get started. Jeff's point of view. My eyes whine more than ever, than I ever had that. What about her dad, Sunday? I growled. Her dad is looking for her everywhere, and Masky and Hoodie heard that, that he'll be starting searching here, and if he finds her here, Lindy said, he will kill us all, I muttered. Lindy put his hand on my shoulders. Smile, child, I know how much you like this girl, but it's too risky for us to keep her here, Lindy said. I put my head down in disappointment and brought it up really fast with a great grin on my face. I have an idea, I said. Where's the child? Slindy said. What if he's too scared to come here? I mean, you're just the most powerful creature ever and maybe we can bring nightmares to life so they won't ever search here again, I said smiling. Slindy thought it for a moment and said, hmm, that could work, but what nightmares are you going to bring, child? Easy. Me, you, and the rest of us are going to scare them. Cindy thought for a mo minute and nod. All right, but if it doesn't work, give her back to her father, okay? I nod. I went back to my room. I went to sleep with Max. Max is fine of you. I woke up and went downstairs to see everyone awake sitting at the table. Good morning, Max. Sally said smiling. Good morning. I yawned. Jeff puts, it, puts his arms around my waist and nuzzles my neck. Good morning, beautiful, he said. Morning, Joker, I said, I said, walking away from him. Jeff followed me and watched me eat breakfast. Right after I finished breakfast, I wanted to play games. Video games with Ben. Jeff kept following me like a sick puppy. I sighed and turned around. What do you want, master? I said sarcastically. We need to talk. Look, if it's about my clothes, I, I will change, but I need to borrow some clothes, I said. No, that's not what about, he said. Oh, then what is it? I said, all surprise. He grabbed my hand and dragged me to his room and locked the door. He sighed before he spoke. It's about your dad, he said. My eyes widened. What, what does he mean? What about my dad? I said, all worried. He miss you, he's, he said. I miss him too, and Isaiah, but I'm here, and I'm staying, I said. R really? Jeff said. I nod and left the room to play video games with Ben. Jeff's point of view. She's staying. I thought out about and smiled even more with her response. I went downstairs to find Max playing video games with Ben. She was smiling and laughing and seeing her like this makes me sane again. But the feeling is coming back again. And I have, I know I have idea how to keep it from coming back. I shook it off and sat next to her watching her play games until she passed me the controller and asked me to play. At first I didn't want to, but I couldn't say no to that face. I nod and played a couple of hours with her before watching a scary movie and falling asleep on the couch with Max in my arms. I woke up in the middle of the night hearing whispers from the other room. There were two voices, but I didn't know who it was. I walked to the room and saw Jane and Ida's Jack talking about something. I didn't what, but Jane gives me a dirty look again. What? I growled. Do you know this phrase, change your clothes? She said, look, if you have something to say, say it right now, I said. Okay, your outfit is weird, you're ugly, and stay away from Jeff, she said. You're jealous, aren't you? Because he likes me, and he hates you. I need to make it you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I teased her. You've been warned, she said. I rolled my eyes and looked at Jack, who seemed amazed. What? No one's ever done that to Jade. Once, not even Jeff, he said. 
Whatever. Good night. I <laughs> still leaving the room. I went to Jeff's room and to go to sleep to see Jeff waiting for me, patting the seat next to him. I sighed and went to sleep next to him. I felt his arms around my waist, pulling me closer to him, nudging my neck. I told him to stop, but he didn't listen. He kept nudging my neck. Then he kissed my cheek. Good night, beautiful, he said. I blushed. Good night, I said before falling asleep. Jeff's point of view. She was asleep in my arms again. I just kept wondering when would I tell her how I feel. Because when she smiles, I smile. And hanging out with her the whole day made me feel that we connected. She was different from the other girls I have ever met. She loves to hang out with us. And sticks out to her clothes from home and sketchbook and other things. She wouldn't be get bored but and find out what in there comes back before dawn. I went back into bed and kissed Max's softly on the lips.